Thank you all for your time tonight um, and for allowing me to come here and present to you some exciting new improvements that we have recently implemented along Biona Creek. On February 5th, uh, Biona Creek Milton Gateway Park was open to the public. The project is part of a larger vision uh, known as Park to Playa Regional Trail. The goal of Park to Playa is to create a 13 mile continuous trail that's multimodal that will connect the Baldwin Hills parklands to the Pacific Ocean. The trail starts or ends, depending on how you want to look at it, um, at the bottom right hand corner right there at the Stockard Corridor Trailhead. Works its way through the Kenny Hahn State Park, um, State Recreation Area, excuse me. Uh, through a new regional trail to be constructed at a future date and uh, connecting to ultimately to the Bionic Creek bike path at Duquesne Avenue. Um, at that point, it works its way down about six miles to the Pacific Ocean via the Bionic Creek bike path. Uh, Milton Park, it's hard to see on this map, but it is located, if you count from the bottom left, count two dots up, <laughs> and it's right there between the second and third dots uh, where the arrow is. Uh, it's immediately between the bike path and south of, across the street from Marina Del Rey Middle School. So it's got a really great uh, potential there to work with the students um, located at that school. Uh, the park creates a new amenity, as you can see along the Park to Playa Trail route, and a new connection for the Park to Playa Regional Trail once it is ultimately completed, hopefully in a few years from now. In recent years, um, we have done multiple improvements along Bionic Creek. We've started out small and uh, worked our way towards this larger project. Uh, the smaller projects are uh, the red dots on this map, actually. Um, next slide. So working from transforming the Bionic Creek bike path access points from uh, abandoned and uninviting places to beautiful and inviting places that have transformed the neighborhoods and made Biona Creek uh, more heavily used and safer for the public. It's actually a really, really well used bike path. Before its transformation, Bionic Creek, or the Milton property, was a vacant eyesore, as you can see from these photos here. The property is 1.2 acres, and it was purchased by the Baldwin Hills Regional Conservation Authority in 2007. Um, it's very narrow, uh, but very long, um, rectangular shape. So the, the design was challenging, but in 2008, the MRCA began discussions with the community and began this conceptual design that you see at the upper portion of this image um, to, to design the park and also a green street element as part of the project. These are some of the features that were requested at the community meetings. A lot of them focus on um, resolving conflicts that I'll talk about later between bike path users. Um, education, of course, because it is directly across the street from the middle school. Um, there were a lot of requests for um, areas for outdoor classrooms and, and learning about our natural resources. Um, shade, of course, um, beautification elements, decorative gateways, just like the gateways that we improved in previous years. So eight years later, um, we are able to go from this to this. And this image is property is obviously to the left, um, and it's looking east, so the ocean will be behind you. And a space that previously kept people out with this chain link fence that you see on the right hand side, now allows for users of the bike path, not only the bike path, but the neighborhood um, surrounding it, and for the students, obviously, to come and access and enjoy its amenities. Looking west, you can see the clear separation between this gentleman on the bike and the property. And now we have 
new areas to rest, get a drink of water, get some shade, have a picnic, bird watch. Those, those all now exist um, for, for the residents and for the larger public. Um, the bike path is limited in its width, um, and so this creates user conflicts um, that I mentioned earlier uh, between the pedestrians, between people who want to stand there and bird watch because this is adjacent to the soft bottom portion of Bayou Creek, and so there's a lot more wildlife that exists here. And um, also the students and bike riders. Um, the students actually, the school has a marine science academy that they uh, do field trips to the Bayou Creek currently, and they take the kids out, they learn about the different species of birds and fish and, and all about the so they really needed a place to be out of the way of this bike path and, you know, of the zooming bike, um, bicyclists. So now um, we have a separate pedestrian <coughs> path for uh, all those, to resolve the user conflicts, essentially. And next slide. So we also have native landscaping, of course, uh, to act as new habitat for wildlife, for local wildlife and turf animals. And these gabion walls that you see in the images are not only structurally um, functional, but they are also permeable. So it's really great, the water can flow through them and um, under them. And so they, they are very uh, useful and environmentally friendly. During the event on February 5th, um, Mark Ridley, Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas was our Master of Ceremonies. And um, some of the other speakers included uh, with representatives from the State Coastal Conservancy, uh, from the Senator Ben Allen came and spoke, um, the chairperson of the Baldwin Hills Conservancy and the school, actually the principal and a student came and she read a letter that the kids wrote together uh, thanking the MRTA, thanking the supervisor's office for giving them this really great amenity that they can now come and enjoy, and they're really excited about it. Senator ben, Senator ben Allen came and talked about, his brother lives actually a few blocks away from this property, so he has seen it in the past when it was the vacant eyesore, and he was really excited now to see what it has transformed into. Um, and he mentioned that he will be coming back, of course, when he visits his brother, he will come and visit the park. Uh, during the event, also, we had in-turf activities for the kids at the school. About 60 students, I believe, came across the way to enjoy um, the event with us and to uh, experience the activities with our in-turf group, who did a really great job educating them about the um, native plants here and about the value of them and, um, and also about water infiltration. That's the upper photo right there, which really great for them to learn the value of, of replenishing our groundwater supply. Um, now they have areas for play and for learning through the overlooks that double as the outdoor classrooms. And the kids were really excited actually about bird watching. Um, as I mentioned, it is the soft bottom portion, so we gave them binoculars and you know they were looking at the herons and the egrets actually experiencing the park after watching it be constructed for over a year. Phase two is planned to transform the currently asphalt street adjacent to the park, and right there to your left is the ball field with the school across the street. So um, transforming this asphalt into a green street is the next, um, hopefully, phase that we will be implementing. Um, Going back to the design that I showed you earlier, the green street is the right above the park with all those trees right there. Um, and it would not only add additional landscaping to the street and all of the benefits that come along with that, but add a new sidewalk to the south part of the street directly adjacent to the new park, a crosswalk across the street to, or towards the middle of the street to help um, 
more safely bringing students to the park and to the Bayan Creek, and also um, vegetated stormwater curb extensions that will capture uh, runoff coming from the neighborhood to the north and also water coming from the park uh, to the south and treat it before it enters the creek. And hopefully it doesn't enter the creek. The idea is that it'll infiltrate and recharge our groundwater. Uh, because currently the all of the runoff that comes from the neighborhood is entering the Bayern Creek uh, polluted mm -hmm. and So once the Green Street is constructed, we will capture about 2,200 cubic feet of water per storm event. Um, and so hoping to, little by little, clean up our waterways. Just listing a few additional benefits of Green Street. Obviously there are a lot in addition to treating the stormwater, helping the city with their TMDL requirements. Um, you know, inst the installation of these trees will sequester carbon and improve our, um, our, our uh, global warming uh, issues that are, are as a result of global warming. Um, you know, aesthetically enhance the, um, the community, traffic calming, there's, there's a lot of, of really great things that'll be a result of so our hope is to go from this sad gray scene here to uh, a green and functional amenity um, within the next year. And lastly, um, as part of the Park to Playa project, we also recently completed the Stalker Corridor Trailhead project um, that will be open to the public on March 4th. It's a Friday. And away and um, we hope that you can all join us and celebrate. It will be an opening event um, mixed with a little uh, hike. So starting at the Stalker Corner Trailhead and working 